Greetings, loyal listeners from across the galaxy. You may recall from our last mission log that our crew regrouped on a floating fighting arena, then left to wrangle a giant worm before returning and robbing an arena employee. And now, Dungeon to the Stars continues. You guys are now just in a small elevator together again. We're all frustrated. Now we just start, like, gang and initiating this guy. We're all just, like... <laughs> Would you like to uh, together beat this guy up into unconsciousness at least? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, I won't participate in beating this guy down. This is too gangster for it to So now you guys have one unconscious employee. Uh, would you like to loot the body? Yes. <laughs> he is a medium-sized creature wearing a medium blue and yellow Huawei uniform. Do we take his uniform? So someone could easily take that and dress up as a Huawei employee. He's got his conglomerate card on him, who knows what's, how much is on that, but obviously not enough to get to the top floor. So he's not a high roller, but he might have some money on his card. card. You can steal his card and see what's on it later if you want. Earlier. Well, now you officially have it. So do you have, like, a communication device in the middle? Like, the walkie-talkie or something? He appears to have no communication device, but no, he does like, He does have a stun baton. Smartwatch or anything? Earpiece? Nothing? Oh, leave it. Stun baton, so I can take it apart. You can take for a t- stun baton if you want. Use it for yeah. parts. Does it get earrings, fillings? Will, if you're so using it for parts, it will have 20 scrap. I know we had a scrap number for you, so it's 20 scrap. And you guys are alone in an elevator with an unconscious naked man. Yay! <laughs> Hoping no one opens the door anytime soon, or things are going to look real fishy. We do have you, to go down. We do can't. you guys go down or out? Those yeah, are the two can't options. Yeah, we reopen the the elevator, the same floor where we just had a disappearing pony, and then beat the shit out of this guy, and then leave well, he's in front of all the same people. We and, have to go down. And like I said before, before it was disabled, you were filmed being here, and you were probably filmed disabling the camera. We gotta go. <laughs> we're all out of the lowest floor, and it's so yeah, down there that they could probably get out. No. Get away with it. We're gonna give him two demotions. <laughs> I mean... The, those of you that have been downstairs know if you kick a naked man out downstairs without a conglomerate car, he's basically homeless and living down there for the rest of his life, for sure. That's like this that is becomes. So unnecessarily cruel. He was probably at one point time a very high roller who got into some debt, and now you're going to make him the poorest man on this, this ship, slave ship. Oh, wow. It'd be, it'd be really cruel if I slapped him in the face when he threw him out the, the door, which is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, he's gonna, unconscious I'm now, so... Out. I'm gonna throw him out of the floor because he was a bad customer. Honestly, <laughs> Oh, no. Fuck the billionaire class. He can go live naked on the bottom floor. So you guys <laughs> dump this poor fellow out on the bottom floor. Do you dump him out on the bottom floor and then stay on the elevator? Or do we... Yeah. Or get off? I don't think we should go down to the bottom floor. We have to pay to get him to the next level. No, I know. You don't have to... You have to pay, you just have to meet a certain credit criteria. Basically a credit check. And you guys have 5,000 globs, so you can get back up to the middle level. Yeah, we'll yeah. slap them around a little bit, toss them out on the lower level, and then make our way back up. You can naked man off the elevator into the seedy underbelly of this ship, and then go back up to the mid-level. Once you're back at the mid-level, do you go back to the wrestling ring or out towards the cabs to get you back to a, a, a freighter? Maybe we should... Yeah, maybe we should go to another hotel. <laughs> There are three casinos here, and you've only been to one. You've only been. Why leave the planet till you've ruined your reputation in every building yeah, possible? Like... Yeah. Right. Then criminal yeah. offenses on the cameras of every casino. <laughs> I mean, obviously they're not affiliated. These are three independent casinos on a non or a conglomerate minor planet. So. They're not going to share information. I'm just saying, if, if we want to scope out all three casinos, we've already scoped out one pretty fully, so we know top to bottom. If we want to rob these casinos, like, we're trying to do, like, some Ocean's Eleven shit. Like, yeah, let's let's go visit the rest of the casinos. Would anyone who got information from the guy at the shack last time like to share information? If you don't remember, you can roll a history check. Oh, man, I don't remember. Because you got information about the other two casinos. Yeah, you... 19? You mean the... the last time... So it sounds like most of you pretty much remember, especially Azir, he remember that there were two other casinos listed. And when you guys inquired about where you could go for fun around here, you guys went to Wollaway for fights. But there was Deluxard, which is the most luxurious casino with probably the highest roller, but more just like natural, like normal gambling stuff. 
And then there was Yardigus Height, which is uh, more games of skill, more of like talents. Ooh, go there. Go talent. Go there. So there's a casino of talent oh. contests, like So You Think You Could Dance. Talent contest casino. Yeah, I agree. Let's go there. Yardigan. You guys go to Yardigus Height. You guys want to ferry a ride there? Right now, it's a low, low rate of four gloms per ride, but only four passengers per vehicle. It's, it's eight in total. Eight gloms total, two vehicles, if you guys are cool with that. Yep. You guys will board two vehicles driven by droids. Five, These big fan okay. vehicles again. They have the big fans in the back that, like, bust you through the swamp. Ooh, fun. Zipping towards the next casino. Uh, you see that it's moving away from you slowly because it's very large. Kicking up that orange flome seems to be bubbling and turning into ass as it pops and releasing a more obnoxious gas. It seems to be stronger as this boat's moving thicker. Cloud. And even though your members are wearing suits, they seem to get nauseous. Uh, maybe just from the recent adventure drinking, riding this crazy fan boat. The ride has gotten pretty bumpy as you guys approach. Uh, so you guys are about to reach Yardigus Height, pull the fan boat up, or your, your driver can, and let you guys off, or you can request a new destination, or some of you can get off and send those of you that aren't feeling very well back to the Zaoshan. Because Dr. P would be like, uh, yeah, let's just leave him in the waiting room, and then we'll, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. V would offer to pay for their ride back. Four gloms can send them back to the Zaoshan. Yeah, I'll, I'll drop four gloms to get them uh, home safely. That'll take Argyle and Zirhi back to the Zaoshan safely. They'll stumble from their ride into the ship, I'm sure, uh, into safety pods where they can rest until uh, they feel better and can rejoin us. As you guys walk into Yardigus Height from the airlock into this larger casino area, it's very similar in build to the one you just left, the Woe Away. Some minor differences, more cameras, more lights... And just fancy, like, stage lights and stuff, too, focused on the inner areas. And it seems to be uh, separated into three tiers as well. Although the elevators here don't seem to have a pay card on them, or, or no way to verify your funds. So you seem to be free to go to any of the three floors you like, without any financial restrictions or restrictions otherwise. And uh, around the circle of the stages are seating, and of course rooms you can rent if you want a private room for a while, etc. But not much else going on. Some vendors selling small items and drinks, things like that, but no major market or anything like that. The level you guys come out on when you leave this airlock, you guys are on the mid-level, seems to be a stage set up for performing. It's a circular stage, two sides. One side seems to be set up for dance competition, the back side seems to be set up for singing competitions. Currently, there's no one performing, but there's, you know, people milling about in the audience, stuff getting set up here, like sound checks, lights being checked. Like a show's about to start? Like a show is imminent. Do you guys want to watch a show, or should we look to, uh, for, like, an information kiosk to see what's on the other two levels? This isn't as uh, much my scene as the Wawa Wah way. Oh, we will. Uh, yeah, let's gather information. Let's find out, like, what else is here. Let's right. label, so, at least. Can we do perception for a, Yeah, uh, perception or knowledge local to figure out what's going on around here. Twelve. Seventeen. I got a five, so... Mr. V is going to see the most, pick up the most. There isn't a lot of view screens around. There's, there's cameras everywhere, and there are view screens that are, are focused on the stage, and you can watch the stage from anywhere, but those kiosks seem to also have information available, but you All have right. to put in a glom for information. I'll glom it for some info. Beam boom. You're connected to a helpful, for lack of a word, bot. Very friendly face appears on the screen. Ready to help you with anything you need here at Yardigus Height. Hi. Hello. Right, who's, up, who's, uh, who's playing next? Up next, we have a solo dance competition. Uh, open invitation, or is it already closed? Sign up is limited. Hurry while space is last. All right. Uh, what are on the other two floors of this uh, glorious complex? Later today, on floor three, we have a cooking competition. On the lower floor, floor one, we have our gladiator test of skills and strength. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and talk to you guys. You know, I'll say we'll be right back with you, uh, computer person. Session uh, ending. Damn. Right, well, boop, 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 boop. We got a little information, so we know there's going to be a dance competition up next. Any, has anyone slipped on their feet to get into a dance competition? I think I might be pretty good in the baking competition since I am good with uh, alchemy and measuring materials to size uh, amounts. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I might want to hop on board that train. So we could hang out here and uh, support you while you perform if you want. Unless anybody else wants to join the I want to do it. Company. I heard Gladiator downstairs. Okay. Yeah, okay. that makes me. Uh, you should definitely do the Gladiator for sure. Smoko and Cass Blix want to try a dance competition? Yeah. Do you bet on yourself? What's the prize? There's no sign-up fee. You just have to sign up, and if you win, you get a prize. It's a cash oh, prize. Fantastic. I mean, this is all being broadcast, so this is being filmed. So when you sign up, you're basically you're giving them the rights to use your images, and this, this dance might be shown. I've got a question. Is there anyone in the universe that's, like, on the hunt for us that would make it a bad idea for us to be broadcast on, like, universal television? 
There's a lot of people after us. Yeah, everyone wants it. This is definitely going to go out and cl- cl- conglomerate cable or whatever you'd like to call it. Yeah, so if we're on the run, should we oh. be dancing? Disguise! What's yeah. That? Yay! Disguise! Yeah. The masked dancer. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right, also we have 5,906 blobs. I have uh, eight blobs. Uh, I don't like gloms. My character doesn't care about fun anyway. That, how confident would you say in, you guys are in your dancing? I'm gonna fuck this dance up, dude. I've never is danced that a, before. Is that a positive for fucking it up, or is that a negative? Yeah, I'm gonna blow people's minds. No, is that, like, good or bad? <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand, on his planet, figures of speech like that aren't used a whole lot. It's not translating well. <laughs> he literally wants to break it's double plus blitz. good. It's gonna be great. All right, is everyone okay with betting 500 bucks on Tex Blitz's performance? I support you. Yeah, do it. All right, you'll have to wait till Kess is up there dancing and then find someone willing to gamble with you. All right. But in the meantime, Kess and Tomoko, you guys go sign up. Yeah, well, we need disguises first. I could give you guys a couple of disguise self-extracts. Go, yeah, go. Perfect. Well, I will tug on the jacket curtails of Mr. V and implore uh, a libation. While holding it, I'll pour it down your gullet, and you will appear one foot taller, but you're going to be about... This is like to make you fat, so you're going to be a foot taller and fat. I want you to look kind of like a kingpin from, uh, you know, uh, Spider-Man. Only four feet tall? So yeah, you're just going to be four foot tall and fat. You're missing your left ear. This is gonna be great because it's just like the reality shows where the guy comes out and you're like, oh, like what? He's not gonna be good at all. And then all of a sudden he's really good and they're like, oh, I didn't believe it. We thought this ugly fat guy was gonna be really bad and we were gonna have to critique his singing and make him sad, but it turns out he's really great. Yeah. And Tomoko, do you want one as well? Yes. <laughs> you're gonna be a foot shorter than Ooh. yourself. Okay. And you are going to be a super thin, bug-like creature. Like what are uh, you're going to look kind of like uh, one of my kids, like Zaphod Beeblebrox. Got yeah, kind of rich. And you are going to have one discerning characteristic. Let's see if it's above a five, it'll be above your waist. You're going to have a surprisingly large bug phallus, which is going to be weird. Excellent. But you, you're wearing clothes, so I mean, you're just gonna have like a really nice bulge. Okay. All right, and you guys, wait your turn. Thirty minutes. Don't worry, the single dance competitions go really quick. Hope we're first up. You guys will be able to get on stage within the next thirty minutes. Do you go first there, Tomoko? It's randomized. So you get to go way before Kiss Blicks. Some other people you've seen them dance. One person dances, another person comes out. It's like a dance off. Where does the music come from? What does it sound like? Oh, it's got a heavy beat. It's like a house beat. The whole time that we've been watching them dance, I've been like doing like small versions of their dance moves to like learn how to dance because I've not done this kind of thing before. I'm just gonna try and imitate all of the people that came before me and I probably squished together a bunch of styles. So yeah, you've seen people get selected by the crowd, pretty much like booze, yeah, so they have like an audience thermometer. Okay. Someone leaves, the next person's called up, you're next to this rotation. There's a big hairy guy up in a really tight suit, got a really long nose. Long feet. He's flapping them around, but his crowd's really worked up by what he's doing, and he frightened the next, the last guy. Uh, so he didn't perform as well as he had been performing before this big guy came out. He's doing his whole routine, and then he stops. And you come out, and there's a light on you. So if I'm cockroachish looking, do I have a shell on my back? Yeah, I have carapace, a little carapace. So can I like attempt to do a good like break dance spin at the end of my dancing? You can attempt to do anything anytime okay. you roll an attempt to do it. I don't have perform. <laughs> can I just stand in place and do like a dozen flips in a row? <laughs> oh, you, can, you can do that. You can do whatever you want. This is a dance contest. Yeah, yeah. So. That's I'm gonna I'm gonna dance. Fifteen? Can I do acrobatics to try and be like break dancing? You can about throw it? a flip on there on acrobatics if you want. Like at the end, throwing a flip is your finishing move. Yeah. Woo! Okay, whatever happens, that's a great flip. Twenty-one. So yeah, your dance moves weren't really wowing anybody, but the flip at the end impressed some people. He has to respond to your dance, and he does. His dancing is way better than yours. Oh, damn it. He's got moves. What? But at the end, he also tries to go for a flip. And? Successful, but not great. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Not as good as yours. Oh. But his dancing was better. Let's see what the audience thinks. Yeah, I do that thing where I'm, like, walking back and forth and, like, doing, like, clap, 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 hands up. Yeah, yeah like, you can. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, you can do that. Well, what hey, would that be? Diplomacy? 
That'd be diplomacy. Oh, 20, not natural. Crowd loves it. We're gonna go wild in the stands. Ah! By a hair. A very slim margin do you beat this bear, bear oh! long nose guy. Did no one thought you could pull it off, but somehow you just worked the crowd really good. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, you get to go into the next dance off too. Yes. Now everyone, what? Everyone's seen those old moves, so you gotta whip out some new moves now. Mm -hmm. Here's your chance for a celebratory dance before your next opponent comes out, though. Something a lot of the show your dancers do if you want to be now. Can I just moonwalk around the whole stage? You only perform checks and moonwalk around while you wait for your next opponent to come out. <laughs> okay. I got a four. Oh, six because of. The that audience thing. immediately questions their previous decision. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you can't dance. Uh, I only got a 15 perform for this dance, so it's only got to be a 15 perform to have a what more impressive dance. What kind of dance were they doing? Uh, they were breaking, popping and locking. They just did their moves at you, you got to do moves back at them. Okay, okay. I'm going to do that. I'm going to break dance back at them then. I was thinking about switching up my dance styles, but I'm going to stick with Russian it. folk dance. Yeah. I'll scream from the crowd and be like, use your dong! No, I've not had one. I don't know what to do with them. Before. What are they good for? <laughs> Instead of trying to do a spin on my back, try to do a spin on my bulge. Oh! I got a five! <laughs> You're just laying on your belly, not spinning at all, trying to spin. You look really ridiculous. The crowd boos. I was gonna say, I'll, I'm gonna roll a bluff and like scream out. I'm like, oh my god, did she just invent the worm? <laughs> <laughs> the dead worm? Can I just start doing the worm? You can, okay. but at this point you're already being danced off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna worm my way off stage. You can worm your way off stage. It's a graceful retreat. It's a really great worm. <laughs> so once again, the audience questions their decision after you leave the stage. They're like, oh, that worm was actually... We should have done that move while she was still competing. <laughs> Over, a little overconfident in your bulge, I guess. Some more dancers come out competing. It goes on like this. Getting towards the end of your 30 minutes of illusion, Kess Blix, but you get called out on stage. Yay! All right, can there I are only four more competitors left at this point. At this point, out in the audience, your big blue friend yeah. wants to gamble. Uh, what's happening, I slowly walk out and just like get on my knees and sit there in silence waiting for the music to hit. And meanwhile, out in the crowd, Nikali. Who would like to gamble? <laughs> just yelling? Guess, yeah, yeah, just yelling at people. Yeah, there's people seen it all around you, so give it a yell. I, on stage, on stage, I'm I'm meditating, <laughs> contemplating my cheat while this occurs. Can I intimidate instead, or is that gonna be? Weird? You can intimidate if that's how you would like to try to get someone to bet with you. I don't yeah, know. Gonna... It's probably gonna be less effective than diplomacy. Yeah, I just rolled diplomacy. It's a uh, seven. They all seem really engrossed in this dance competition. They don't really want to talk to you, a big scary blue guy. That's fair. And at that moment, the beat drops. Test levitates up. And then when he lands back on his feet, he starts doing very graceful, swirling movements like he's a claw floating in the wind. Fast Tai Chi, that is a very good terminology. I'm going to roll for that performance. And that's your kata, which does allow you to levitate. 21. What I want to do is when the beat, like when the breakdown comes, when the beat drops in, like the blah, <laughs> I want to stop doing this like nice, graceful, like bag floating in the wind. Win, like American Beauty, and then like go into like a Samoan haka ah, with my tongue and like start yeah, your you know? back to look great. Yeah. Really, really it's like stomp heavy at the end. The guy you're dancing get against has sort of a gelatinous body. Uh, I rolled a 21 also, 18 plus 3, uh, to dance against you. Did you roll a finishing move? Yeah, so after I do this, uh, the intimidating stomp haka, I want to uh, spin around do like a 360 like pirouette kick that goes over his head. All right. Well, like a capoeira type thing. That's a good roll. This is a pretty good dice. All right, guy. slimy guy tries to slimy dance back at you, but I only got a 10 that time. So you overall dance better than the audience thinks so. Yay! Yay! Only three more competitors to go against. You can win the cash prize. You can win the cash prize. I didn't prize. even have to take out the sword this time. Meanwhile, Nikali, you're trying to bet again on this next round? Yeah, I'll just keep rolling. Yeah, roll again. I'm gonna allow, yeah, you can find some little gamble with you as long as it's not a big, they don't seem to be like big gamblers, but they seem a little interested. What, what kind of action are you looking for? 500 on the fat man. Well, they just saw how well he danced, that's a little rich for their blood. They'd be willing to go 50. Alright, 50. <laughs> this is a little, yeah. a little fun. They, like, they make it a little more interesting. They're not big spinners, but they can make watching this a little more fun. Yeah, Why maybe, not? The, yeah, maybe this is somewhere. Maybe I make a friend. I don't know. Who knows? Next dancer come out. It must have been flustered by your performance. I only got a 12 of this guy. He's is really confused. He just had to, He came out no moves. Another human guy just like you. He's just totally flustered. 
does like, like a, a does like an arm wavy move, but that's like it. Humans. He just goes out and does like the Carlton. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, since I did the nice uh, the speedy Tai Chi, Timmy and Haka, and a kick, now I'm gonna start doing some like real jazzy, like jumping around, kind of like avant-garde stuff, powerful movements and like punches, and then like some like dramatic interpretive dance acting really really uh, increase the drama of it. some real black swan shit three that 60 so your dance moves are obviously much better than his but as you're like doing your response dance he gets out of his funk and this time i got a 22 for his finishing oh. move of his dance he pulled his one trick move out he dislocated his arms and did like a helicopter move Woo! that's all intense all right it's time to do super powered frogman jump because I still have my frog powers, but I'm just a fat man. So I'm going to jump twice as high as that guy and do twice as many spins as that guy. Jump over him! <laughs> yeah, I'm going to jump over him and spin like a Mario! That sounds like an acrobatics, probably. <laughs> Natural 20! Oh, yeah. Oh, man. This Natural 20, the audience is going to love that, too. The applause meter goes wild. Women faint. Aliens toss up their underwear. As all this is happening, meanwhile, back on the Zaoshan... Roll me a perception check. 17. Well, after you've got your two returning crew members tucked into their pods safely, you notice more ships approaching. This time, some land on the same deck as you. They are both bearing the marking of the All-Stars. Several All-Star members get off the ships and head over to get taxis to somewhere. I follow them? Well, the ships are parked next to you now. They're on the same deck as you. You could, you want to try and follow the people? Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can fly your ship around the planet if you want. There's not any place for you to land it once you follow them, but if you want to have your big, large ship follow their little, tiny, little hovercraft, it's taking them to the... <laughs> I mean, I think they'll automatically know something's up, but you can do that if you like. That's some, like, Roadrunner cartoon <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to contact Tomoko. You know, get no response and assume she's out of range. Because uh, I've seen that, you know, the hovercraft stop at these platforms. Yeah, you can wait till their rides come. And then try to tail them with as much range as possible to maintain visual contact to maybe get an idea of where, the, where they're going. Is it, from a high enough distance, you don't even have to move very much. You can just watch from above. Yeah, roll me a stealth check to pull that off without looking suspicious. Roll that 12. Not great, but I only rolled, uh, about even with that. So they may notice you up there. Like, they're like, oh, look, a ship's up there. At this point in time, you're not doing anything suspicious. You're just seeing them, and you're not close enough to be a threat. But they do see there's a show there, just not paying a lot of attention to it. You're not drawing attention to yourself. They head towards one of those big ships. One of those big ships. You have no uh, idea of knowing which one is which. there signage on the outside of it to indicate which one it is? Well, there's one ship that's, like, obviously decked out and luxurious in front of what you've heard. That's probably Deluxard. The other two look largely alike on the outside, kind of grimy. All sort of clustered in one area, although one seems to be moving away. One seems to be moving away? Yep. From the cluster of ships. That's odd. Uh, is it moving quickly? It's a pretty large ship, so they move very slow. You can just see it's like churning up the flume, which is creating more noxious gas and stuff like that behind it. Sure, it's the miracle life. But it's steadily moving away from the other two large ships. Is there any apparent reason for this? Mm, knowledge local. Got it. 19. You're able to scan. They seem to be moving towards what uh, look like fuel platforms. So maybe it's just something, energy for this vessel and all its apparatus. Probably going to get some fuel from this fuel platform on the planet. So did I lose sight with the All-Stars hovercraft? You can still see them. They're getting, you know, tinier as they get farther away. But they seem to be going towards that one large ship that's, that's currently moving. There's nowhere to dock on these large vessels that are casino-like. These they do seem to have places ships can dock, but you got the impression that they're for high rollers, big spenders, you know, VIP, that you have to have clearance to get in them. You can't just fly in like you can the decks you landed on. Someone's got to let you in. That makes sense. I'll keep a holding pattern above this big one to see if I can track its progress. All right, so back inside, dancing his little heart off. Yes, Blix. Now you can do a little victory dance if you want, then your next challenger is going to come out. I yeah. will refrain from a celebratory dance, and I will start meditating once more to focus my chi on my next performance. All right, so there's only one left. I don't know if someone chickened Question. out or whether there's only one performer left. Yeah, what did I get for betting on him? Oh, he, he won that round, so you get you double your money. Yay, all right. I look to see if they want to bet another hundred on him. But this time? Yeah, money diplomacy. Uh, uh, <laughs> three? <laughs> they say sure, but this time they want to bet on that guy. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's my buddy. Of course I'm going to bet on my buddy. That'd be betrayal. Well, they say, well, let's just enjoy the show then. Well, I mean, we could do the 50 again. You would think I mean, that. Oh, look, it's starting. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Challenger comes out. I rolled a natural 20. Wow. 
This guy's wearing an all-star vest. He's definitely one of those all-stars pirate guys. His moves are stellar. He does some John Travolta type shit, like in Saturday Night Fever. He dances a lot of stuff. And Michael. He dances in Michael. <laughs> dances in Look Who's Talking Too. So out bust to Natural 20, sir. Or impossible, but I'll try to... Still I'll try do to, your best. I'm going to flip up from my uh, meditative position and belly slide through his legs. And then I'm going to throw my sword into the air and have it come down right towards while I'm spinning. And I'm going to flip out of the way and land in a pose as my blade misses me and lands onto the performance stage. Alright, you can roll me a perform for all that. I'll allow it as all that. <laughs> as your kata, your sword dance for this hey, one I instance. Got a not a 20, Still but. very impressive. Nice show. Afterwards, of course, the crowd goes a little wilder for them than for you. But afterwards, he shakes your hand, you go backstage. Tomoko's back there because they haven't released all the, the previous dancers, you know. Uh, congratulations, this guy gets a glom prize. And then I murder that guy! <laughs> oh, no. As you go to murder him, he greets you and says, uh, My dance crew, short a couple dancers. One of our ships didn't show up. You got some moves. Would you be interested in joining our crew? You got time to learn a couple steps? Am I around my, the, my people or am I backstage? Only Tomoko. You're backstage with Tomoko's there. No one else is. Ah, uh, I, I, I say I have to think. Well, the name's Dinky. What's your name? <laughs> well, Kes Blix from Fod, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. I'll, I'll remember your face. I don't remember your name. <laughs> Captain Dinky. Have a way that I can contact you? No. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the dance competitions, man, so I'll, I'll be hanging out here for a while. Oh, you can man. find me here. In about three minutes, I'm going to turn into a frog. <laughs> I'm going to look like this. Whoa. That's wild, man. <laughs> I'm going to be a giant frog man with a turtle shell on my back. I don't know who I am, but I'll know you because I can never forget. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess come find. Can you still dance when you're a frog? I can still. I can still. All right, man. Well, that's. I, I guess just, that's cool. I just need to consult with my team before I make any decisions on my on my own. Yeah, Alex, I'll be in the area. Just find me or anyone in one of these All Stars jackets, man. They'll hook, they'll know where I'm at. They'll find me. All right, Captain Dinky. I'll be a turtle frog, man. If you're familiar with that race, I'll be a snar. Got it. I had to do Short and I green. I got some on my record, you know, the, the TV, you know, I can't risk Big Brother seeing. I'm slightly autistic, so I either don't tell you anything or I re reveal too much about my personal life, and I'm sorry. I'm loving all this information, man. I'll, I'll put it away. I'll lock that away up here. I feel like I'm making a new friend here. A new, hopefully you'll join our dance crew. This is going to be great. Yeah, Dinky. I, I liked your stuff. It was very great. Some of that is my fighting style. Oh, that, that's wonderful. Like, so we got a big group dance coming up later. Like, once this thing's parked, they're going to do a big group dance, man. And we, I really want to win. Now, these solo dances are, are small money, man. The group dance is where all the big bucks are at. We'll, we'll split it with you. you get part of the prize if we win. Oko be in it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Tomoko says, fair. We are short two people, but you know, we're looking for really good dancers. I'm gonna go grab a goodie bag and I guess I'll see you guys later. Is there swag? Oh yeah, there's swag bags. Hey, let's go get one. Let's get them. You can get a swag bag. It's got a little naked pink rubbery doll with a, like a honky horn nose. And then you get like a little uh, outfit, like a t-shirt with a Yardagus height on it. The so one size fits all. It stretches to fit any size, although it's very tight if you're large. There's a bottle of water. There's also a bottle of vinegar. <laughs> what are these bags? That's all there is. I think this is just like from the wastebasket. They don't seem to be great goodie bags. Most people don't even grab them. Yeah, this Most is, people just gonna... leave them behind. I want one anyway, but uh... Seems to be just a very large pile of gift bags. It's like, grab on the way out if you want. Can I take more than one? You feel like outright trying to take more than one? Oh, oh. So, it's not like they're trying to get rid of them. Oh, they are. Kes is so overjoyed, he immediately puts on his Yarkus Height official t-shirt. It's a plain white tee with Yarkus Height just written on there in a Comic Sans font. Oh, God! Kes loves it. He does it. He, he loves it. You guys can rejoin your crew that's here. Out in the audience, do you remember where their seats were? Let's go. I'd love to see. I'd like to see. That's okay. I have a side job. Hey, guys, I'm this guy named Kevin. That white man, but he's he's gonna have a big dance competition where we could potentially make a lot of gloms. And he asked me to join his team, but I, I have to wait and talk to my team on if I could join it. Go for it, man. And What's dance. Name? All stars. Yeah. All oh, stars. Fuck that. 
just dancing and have a good time. Oh wait, would they be the kind of people that would have? Are they? Would they be like bounty huntering us? Maybe you should have told them not your name, but like a different name. Or maybe you can just take another potion so that you don't look like your normal self again. But I already told them that I was going to be that person. And you told them what planet he comes from, what race he is. <laughs> Told him, he told him everything. That's very normal. Well, Maybe push we... comes to jump, we could always just murder every single one of them. So you guys want to go check out a cooking show? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's go to the cooking show. <laughs> yeah, you guys show. ride an elevator up to the third level. I'll a couple of extracts real quick, but they're secret extracts for the... Are you going to ignite the judge's taste buds? Do you have enough time to, and supplies and stuff to repair them? I have what they call swift alchemy, so I can make them in uh, half the amount of time. It usually takes like five minutes to make each one, I believe. So I can make, I need to make three, so I need seven and a half minutes to cool. make three extracts. Okay, you're just mixing stuff from vials in your pockets into yeah. other vials. You guys are going to be up there uh, whenever there's another cooking show going on anyway. Baskets full of mystery ingredients, three rounds. Uh, oh, okay, so it's already started. Damn. Right. Yeah, there should be another one after this, probably. That seems where they do things so here. So, can but... we just go sign up for the next round, then, since it's so close to the end of the... I want to go sign up, but I'm going to, uh, for my disguise, I'm going to put on my ascot that has four hidden pockets and stash my three extracts in there. That's part of my disguise. I'm going to wrap it around part of my, my mask. While oh, Mr. V is preparing Kiss hugs on his little uh, jacket there, and then he says... Whatever you make in the competition, make it very special. I'm not gonna put a bunch of spice in their in their uh, in their food. Sorry, I, that, I already thought about that, but I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spice them. I'm not gonna poison them. I promise you that. This is Mr. V you're talking to. I'm here to wow. Uh, I, I do trust Mr. Yeah. Yeah. True. I'm not up to no good. I promise you. I'm, I'm here to. Really for the medicinal value of it. That's what Kess is. No, I'm, I'm here. To, I'm here to wow them. I'll sign up to Moko. You coming in too? I don't know if I do very good, but I'll tr- I'll try. Don't bet on me, but yeah, I'll try. You sign up for cooking slot too. New experiences. After this is over, there's a amateur chef competition. What, what you guys call for for since you haven't appeared here before? Or don't you think so you don't, can't do any of the, the big guy shows yet? But there's a little guy show, and you guys qualify for it. You guys will stick around for an hour. And while I'm sitting there, I might as well make another extract, another. Hidden extract as well. I look around for more people to bet with. Would you like to bet with me? You can try to pre diplomacy a bet with someone before this next competition starts. Hello, sir. In your best friendly voice. Yeah. Hi. You wanna bet? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna I love bet. betting. Let's bet. Yeah, I'm gonna bet on that guy over there. You see that, that, that guy in the, the face mask who looks like he probably can't cook? Yeah, I'm all, I wanna bet on that guy. I got a good feeling. How much How much is your ceiling? 17 gloms. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I get. It, can that be like the start? And then, like, if he wins. Continue, like whatever. Oh, that's my lucky number. I only bet 17 gloms. Wowzer, do you have any friends? <laughs> no. I'm a really lonely guy. I just watch these cooking shows all myself. You're the first person to walk up to me. Really, no one talks to me. I don't have a whole lot of money, man. My crew left me here. This is, I don't have a bunch of gloms just lying around to, to blow. We left you, that's fine. Uh, you're basically worthless to bet with. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go look for someone else to bet with. Hour that we have. This guy's gonna cry into his sleeve and wait for the Aww. next cookie show to begin. Kes walks over to him and says, I like the number 17. It's a worthless number and I hate it. Yeah, I'm gonna bother somebody. Yeah, of course. It's not gonna roll well, but. That's why it's funny. Just a guy walking around half like people. 15? There's a group of three people that seem interested in you more than interested in gambling. They seem willing to entertain your talk of gambling to have a conversation with you. Woo! Like, really Alright, well, as long as they uh, are willing to talk about betting, then we can actually bet. And, uh, let's bet. How much, how much are they willing to bet? They're willing to bet 500 gloms. P. Hey. Uh, you know what? I'll bet 500 gloms on Mr. Dr. P. They bet 500 gloms. You won't follow them back to their private room. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was not what the bet was. And Sounds like a quick you. way to make 500 gloms, brother. <laughs> Sounds like a quick way to die. <laughs> 500 gloms is 500 gloms. They're gonna Are take your kidney. Adult? No, okay. he thinks they're going, to, they're going to try and kill him. No, I'm betting on the food competition. That is all. Gold arms. Bummer. I'll go in his place. <laughs> I mean, how about him? I'll help you, friend. <laughs> They'll give you 10 gloms for him. No, 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 no. Wait, you can't sell our friends. <laughs> totally will. <worth it. laughs>
<laughs> he seems like I'm, much less fun. I'll go with him as long as I'm back in time for the competition. No well, promises. Yeah, no promises. Look, we're gonna do this or what? This cooking competition really worked me up an appetite. Um, wait, wait. You use the word appetite. Wants to have you for dinner. He wants to eat me. Hey, what? Next. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's not waste any more time here. If you're not willing to bet on the food competition, then uh, no. I will continue to roll diplomacy. All right, one more. Fifteen again. A group of five all-stars is all crowded together. Really drunk. They seem willing to gamble, though. Sure. Like, how much is your ceiling? They're willing to bet you 600 gloms. You are dumb. <laughs> and they laugh. Ha ha ha, you're correct. Now give me my <laughs> You won! You won! Yay! Flag, flag, flag. So they give you 600 gloms because you're so dumb. Yay! Yeah, you won the bet. <laughs> all stars, all stars. Yeah, I just, I do it as I walk away. All stars. I'm like, oh. Uh, Put yeah. on a mustache and go back and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Get more money. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. It was a great time to be had by all clowns. All right, so it's time for you to go backstage there, Mr. V, and prep for this cooking competition. I'm gonna give you a novelty apron. Ooh, what's it say? It says Yargus Heights in Comic Sans font. Oh, okay. It's white. <laughs> you can wear that over your outfit white while you cook. Font. Yeah, it's white font, white on white. Uh, <laughs> no, it's rainbow colors. Yargus Heights is written in rainbow colors. Ooh. And Comic Sans font across the apron. Oh, yes, yeah, so they give you an apron to wear, explain the rules of the competition to you. Every round has a basket of mystery ingredients. Judges are going to talk shit about your food and cut one of you each time. Whoever's left at the end gets to eat the ice cream and wins a prize. Wow, two prizes. Yeah. You know, I want that. So you can only use the ingredients provided in the basket. I know how I feel about that. And in the pantry, any outside ingredients will get you disqualified. The whole thing's being filmed, of course, which may make you fully aware of. Dude. Enjoy the show and have fun out there. Oh, I need, I need to sort out my disguise then. Can I tie my t-shirt around my head? I don't know. All right, I have my water bottle with me, so I'm gonna splash my, I'm gonna do like in True Lies when Jamie Lee Curtis shows up to the hotel room one way and then like in the mirror outside the hotel room, she like slicks her hair back and like rips a bunch of stuff off of her dress and like changes the way she looks. So it's gonna be a real quick, like 10 seconds worth of like ripping and stuff this t-shirt and then pour my water bottle on my head. Try and make myself look different, I guess. So yeah, you guys are out there on stage in front of your first baskets. You're introduced. There's a nice little pink faced bot that sort of like hosts everything here. Squeaky voice introduces the show, introduces the three judges, introduces you by the name that you gave to the people backstage before, and you're standing there in front of your first basket, and a three, two, one, and open your basket. Three, two, one, open your first basket. In it is a strange tuberous root vegetable. It's black and slimy. Okay. Underneath that, what appears to be a fun cake icing and stuff on it. Like a regular human cake? Like a regular human cake. And then in the bottom of the basket, a jar of jelly. What flavor? It doesn't say. It's sort of yellow orange. Can I give everything a good sniff? Yeah, with a perception check. Can I perception our weird gray slimy log tuber? Thirteen. Smells like corn smut. Oh. Like okay. fungus. Got a funky little odor to it. Slimy. You can sort of like scrape the slime off the surface with your finger. Can I look to my left and right and see what the people at the stations next to me are doing with this weird slimy thing? One of them is Dr. P and he's staring into his baskets pretty much just like you are. The guy in the middle though seems to be going at it. He already tossed it in the blender. nature on the tuber or or fungus, whatever it is. I got an 11. Yeah, you don't know a whole lot about it other than it's some sort of tuberous vegetable. Starchy, slimy, weird. It looks like a vegetable that would exist on your home planet, but it isn't one. Alright, can I roll a perception on the cake and, and like, you know, see what, what all... What are we making? What are we supposed to make? An appetizer. An appetizer, okay. <laughs> uh, can I just uh, take a little bite of the cake? Eight on the perception for the cake. It's covered in frosting, so it's hard to make out anything. You want to try to bite it? Yeah, I want to try and bite it. All right, roll me a reflex save. Oh, 19. All right, so you don't hurt yourself, but you bite down and realize it's hard. Luckily, you didn't bite it, but you bit it gingerly and not very hard. You would have chipped a tooth. It's a painted rock. It's like icing on top of a rock. I tell Dr. P. He just yelled that out. It's just icing on a rock. All right. The guy next to you is scraping the icing off of his rock, putting it in a bowl, mixing other stuff with it. I want to take, scrape the icing off the cake, or no, put the whole cake and the rock in 
into a pot of water. Make some hot rock icing water? <laughs> yep, hot rock icing water. <laughs> okay. And then I want to um, chop the slimy root veg up into thickish sections of like taro root chip style. Throw them into the pot too. Blanching in the sugar water. And then I want to go get hot sauce from the pantry and taste that jelly. So you pop the lid off the big jar of jelly? You want me a strength check to open the jelly? Twelve. Twelve. So you're struggling with the lid. You can't get the lid off the jelly. Somebody help me open this jelly. Oh, brown. Bust it. Can I help her open the jelly or is that... Like no, you're in the audience. You can't come down yeah. from the audience and get on stage. That'd be weird. <laughs> Seems like that'd be frowned upon. Can I go to Dr. Pinky? Yeah, you could maybe get your, one of your fellow chefs. Hell, you can walk over there. Maybe he's, I'm he's a friendly chef. I'm going to walk over and be like, hey, can you open this for me, please? All right. No, I got a six. <laughs> Next yeah. chef. And the chef in the middle of this laughs. He shakes his, I'm busy, I'm busy. I'm too, I mean, Dick, can I try again? I'm gonna try yeah, you can again. try again. Maybe I loosened it. Uh, 14. You did loosen it. It's loose now, but it's not off yet. You can feel it. It's about to budge. All right, I'm going to try again. I got a natural one. It's tighter. <laughs> no, you drop the jar. It breaks open, angering the jelly inside. Roll for initiative. Anger. Time for a battle in Kitchen Stadium. <laughs> this food is fucking dangerous. I got a 14 initiative. Uh, 16. Jelly breaks loose in the jar. It's obviously alive and lashing out at you. Shards of glass stuck in it. Can I uh, grab a pot from off of my station, like a kind of large one, and turn it over on top of him and try to trap him inside the pot? CMB, they try to grab him with a pot. What do you see? Not him, but I'm going to put it on top, like a, yeah. a spider I don't want to. <laughs> Four. <laughs> yeah, nah. <laughs> so yeah, he squishes out from underneath uh, and then tries to attack you. I only got an eight, though. What does his attack look like? Like, what? trying to slam up against you. So it's not like a little jelly arm that comes out at me. No, it's just like the whole thing sloshes towards you. Tried to slimer you. Is there, are there any, like, uh, containers of pasta or something in the pantry that are in a glass jar that I can, like, throw the pasta on the ground and then put this thing inside of the glass jar that the pasta used to be in? Perception check. 18. I nothing, can see if there's a jar Nothing with pasta. a lid, but there's, yeah, there's jars with pasta in it. There's no lid. But it's glass. Yeah. All right, I'll try to... It with, a, with a saucepan, scoop it into the glass jar. <laughs> Ten. Oh, almost. <laughs> you start trying to scoop it up. It lurches out of the pan at you. Damn it. This time I got a 24. <laughs> so that's splash at you that time. So seven damage plus one acid damage. So eight damage total. And it gets to try to grab you. No. I only got a 16 versus your CMD. Yes. So then the ooze is latched onto you now. Bloop. Where's the thing? Is it on like my shoulder where the shirt is or on my front where the apron is? On your right arm. In that case, I'm going to take my shirt off and bundle it inside of it like a diaper. And then I'm going to put that into the pot that I tried to put the thing in initially. And I'm going to put that in the oven and turn the oven off. All right, roll me a CMB to at least get it off your arm. <laughs> Maybe it's like a lobster and you have to like cook it. Eight. <laughs> yeah, close, but I'm unable to scoop it up. Oh, I rolled a one, though. Because I rolled a one, it's not going to damage you this time. So it's still on you, but it's not going to do anything. This is there. Okay, I'm going to make another attempt at balling it up inside of my t-shirt. Switch dice to uh, 18. Oh, yeah. You're able to grapple at that time. You scoop it all up and toss it in the oven. Yeah, I mean, is, it, on high. is it an oven-safe pot? Like, I don't know what they're cooking. <laughs> all the pots all the pots are made to go in the oven. Okay, perfect. I'm going to do that, then. I'm gonna try to cook this jelly a la t-shirt and then I'm gonna coat the whole thing in uh, sugar water taro root chips and pretend like it's a pie. Like make a crust on the top out of the taro root chips that have been cooking on the stove the whole time. In water? And, in sugar water? Mm-hmm. And then I'm gonna put those on top so and I think that... Squishy root vegetable on top of this shirt jelly. Don't forget to, when you, don't forget to list all your ingredients when you take it to the judges. I'm gonna deep fry the chips and scallop them on the top. All right, you deep fry the chips and scallop them on the top of your okra jelly. You're waiting for that to finish cooking for you put that on top, so you gotta wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, and uh, there could be like a cheesecloth situation with the shirt where I like squelch it out into the pan and then cover it. We'll wait and see. Yeah, we'll see what it looks like in a minute. All right, meanwhile, Mr. V, you witnessed that whole jelly situation. (laughs) Haven't even gotten to your ingredients and stuff yet, so. Don't open the jar. What do you got going on over there for your meal? Um, all right. Well, first of all, uh, is there a blast chiller available? Yeah. Something to, to super freeze something? Yep. Uh, all right, I'm going to fle- uh, freeze my jelly in the blast chiller while I scrape off all the frosting from the stone. Are you freezing it inside the jar? Yes, inside the jar. And I'm going to 
scrape off all the frosting and put that aside. Um, and so, can, then can I analyze the stone? Is it an actual stone, or...? Yeah, what do you want to roll to figure that out? Nature, uh, or...? Yeah, it'd probably have to be nature, I guess. Ah, uh, no, seven. It seems to be a stone-like to you. You, can, you can't seem to break it open all right, well, with any of the kitchen my, tools. Uh, jelly is freezing, I'm going to chop up the tuber into long oblong sections that resemble, like, french fries almost. Then can, can I go to the pantry and grab some, you know, some decent spices? More, I'm going to do, like, a, a light breading on them to kind of reduce the acidity of what I intend to introduce to the dish later. So I'm going to look for something similar to, like, a flour or a baking soda um, or baking powder. Uh, add all my spices into that. Toss my tuber, which I've cut into french fries. I'm making kind of a version of, like, a uh, truffle frites is what I'm going for for the entire plan. So I'm going to toss those in that, and then I'm going to drop those into the fryer. And then is there, do I have, like, Oh, a, wait a second. Like, the fryer's busy right now. Tomoko. Those uh, tarot chips are in there currently. Okay, well I can hold off on that for the time being then. There's can, one fryer. I, well, you want to? You can move one over and share if you would like. Yeah, dumb. Gonna you share. were using both baskets, but yeah. Oh, if, I didn't. No, you didn't tell me that. Yes, I'll share. All right, so you take some stuff out of one basket and dump it in the other. So there's, there's a basket open for you now. All right. Uh, while those frites crisping up, I want to take like a microplane to the stone and try to shave some off and then taste it and see if it has any flavor besides just a fucking rock. All right, try, give me a strength check to grate that stone. All right, that is going to be a 17. You're scraping with all your might. You might get a little dust, but it's not anything you can taste. It's kind of like poofs away when you grate, when you grate it, like all chalk. Right. Whatever right, you well then, think. Uh, let me do a perception on the frosting and see how sweet it is. Natural one. You got your mask on and everything. It's hard for you to taste things. You hold it up to it and try to get a whiff without taking off your whole face mask and everything and putting it in your actual mouth. Usually to eat your food through your tubes, you know? Yeah. All right, well, um, in that case... Well, I'm gonna leave the frosting there while my fries are cooking. I'm gonna go over to the blast chiller. Is my jelly sufficiently frozen? How many minutes would you have liked to blast chill it for? Three minutes. Roll 3d4. Three Five. Three makes eight. You take it off the blast chiller? Alright, and then I'm gonna take a uh, meat tenderizer and tap the glass to break it, and hopefully everything inside is frozen. Everything inside is not frozen, although it did take some cold damage. And now you have to roll for initiative. Maybe because it's frozen, though, I got a natural one for initiative for this thing, so you're gonna need to jump on it. Four, but, you know, so it's still higher. And you can tell it's just like the outer skin that's frozen. It starts to get, like, gelatinous again almost as soon as you break the jar. Okay, well, then I guess I will try to use a CMB to... Or, yeah, CMB to scoop it up into the bowl with frosting. Big mixing bowl? Yeah. Want me a CMB to scoopy? Uh, that is going to be a 19. You scoop. Yeah. Hey, luckily it's moving very slow right now. You know, this bowl has no lid, but I'll give you a chance to do something with it since you just scooped it up. Immediately, ugh, I, don't, I don't really know how, how I feel about this. I'll, I'll toss the jelly and the frosting into a pot, close the lid, and turn up the heat. But I've got a sweetening agent in there with it. All right, you guys let those cook. Oh, you've only got 10 minutes left. Oh, okay. All I need to do is... Uh... Pull my tarot chips out. Pull my. Can I go ahead and pull my thing out of the oven now and see what it looks like? Peek it. Open the oven door and look at it. What's it look like? Peek. Yep. It's like a bubbly jelly. It's still moving around. <gasps> How? It's, uh, it's obviously taking damage. If it's been in here, if it was seven minutes, you can roll seven d six. If it's nine minutes, you can roll nine d six. That'll determine how damaged it is. Nine d six. Mm-hmm. Seems like so much. Yeah. Strong jelly. Full of flavor. I mean. Thirty two. Thirty two and four is thirty six. So I'm gonna um, take the jelly thing out, put it on top of the stove, and go grab my basket of fried chippies. Come back and layer them in like a scallopy pattern on top, and then as you do that, roll for initiative. You now it's hot jelly still alive. It's oh no, me. six. I got a seven, so just enough to beat you. But I only rolled a seven to attack, so it misses you because it's bubbling and weak. But it tries, you can tell it's lunging out of the pot at you when you're it's going like to. It's like trying to murder me while it's dying. It's trying to get out of the pot still when you're trying to pour stuff on it. Yeah. It doesn't reach you, of course, as I rolled to the but it's definitely like lurching out of the pot. Okay, so I'm going to layer all my chips on food. top, and then I'm going to put it back. Is that all the ingredients? What are the other ingredients? I think it, there was three. Is there, I, I didn't discard any of the water, the sweet water. So, can I brush some of that on top and then put it back in on a low broil for five minutes to, like, crispicize the top, but also still keep the inside hot? I'm going to leave you a minute left to plate it at least. Well, two, right? Wait, it'll be eight total, and I want to put it in for five, so three minutes of plating. Rolling the 5d6 on there. It's going to be 
a terrible pie. Four is 19. 19. Meanwhile, Mr. V, how many of your 10 minutes did you have left, V? Would you like to leave your jelly in the oven? I'm going to leave them in there as long as possible. For the last five minutes, I'm going to take my stone that I cleaned off from the cake, and I'm going to put that in the oven for five minutes to heat it up. It's going to be my plate. Okay, nice. Ooh. Nice. Fancy plating. Meantime, is there any meat in my pantry that I can use something similar to like a sausage? Yeah, yeah, you want to add some extra protein to it, that's fine. Yeah, I want to uh, start making a, a sausage gravy, so I'm going to brown that sausage with uh, some nice spices, uh, like, you know, salt, pepper, and something uh, similar to a red pepper-ish. About uh, one minute before the time is over, I want to pull out my jelly cream mix and dump it into the sausage to make kind of like a gravy aioli kind of thing. Right, you get to roll 9d6 uh, then since it'll be in there for nine minutes. And right. Then you can rush plate it. It's only one minute yep. left to go. 21. All right, so as you guys are trying to plate your dishes, roll for initiative again. Goodness. I oh, this thing is dying. Right. Yeah, I want to make sure my uh, my fries are out as well, and I'm gonna you know start the plating yeah. process. Well, you're plating everything right now. This is your finishing touches. You're plating everything, trying to take it over the judges. Your jellies Tucker are still attacking. Guy. Oh, this plate looks great. He's doing fine. Twenty, not natural. Six. Yeah, you get to go first. Your jelly is on the plate. It's still wiggling, and you're walking it over to the judges' table. It's weak. Well, but even it's still though alive. like I cut a slice of it, like just a, a pie yeah. slice of it is still alive and jiggling. Yeah, like reaching for you as you're carrying the plate over there. You see it like moving towards your hand. Can I rotate the plate so that it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do that as you walk over. That's fine. I'm going to rotate the plate and to put keep it, down. it away from me and then put it down. You serve three plates of that to the judges. The guy in the middle brings his plate up. His is, seems to be fine. Nothing on it is alive. <laughs> Mr. Von Hohenheim, you bring up your plate. It seems to be wildly alive still. Uh-oh. So roll for initiative as you're trying to carry your plate up. Plate everything on top of a hot stone well. Yep. I'm going to drizzle the uh, hot gravy on top of the hot tubers. Because you're plating it on a hot stone, I'm going to give it, I'm going to go ahead and roll and have some extra fire damage for it too, just because you put it on a hot stone. So it took a little extra damage from you pouring it on the hot stone, but it's still bubbling and trying to reach you. Alright. Uh, do I have any time left? No, this is the, pl- the plating's done. You're, this is carrying it to the judges right now. I got 24 attacking you. Yeah, okay. Alright, so as you're carrying this thing over to the judges table, 9... And then two acid damage. So nine damage plus two acid. Tries to latch on to you. I got a 16 versus your CMD. 18. All right, so it tries to grab onto you, but doesn't isn't able to latch onto your suit or anything. I'll make a show of it like I'm slapping a piece of parsley on top to really make it aromatic, but if I'm going to slap it right onto the onto the jelly. It's only going to be a nine. Hit it, but it doesn't seem to do anything to it and when you slap at it. You're going to drop your plates on the table. The one they like most is obviously the guy in the middle. The problem you play, they'll talk about all, what you guys did and what, what do you they. Mean obviously, uh, his is cooked. Uh, they'll say we obviously <laughs> like what you guys try to do. They'll compliment your ideas, but obviously both of your dishes are inedible because your ochre jelly is still alive and they create a digestive acid that eats flesh. And if any of the judges were to eat that, it would rot their insides. Well, they're gonna vote because only one of you can get cut. So uh, I guess they're gonna yeah, have to they're gonna have to weigh that and see which well, one of you is cut. What did the other guy do? I want to know. He made an ochre jelly hash. Maybe he just got his in the oven in time, like right away. Now the judges are going to struggle. They're going to de- deliberate over who's going to get cut. Apparently Tomoko's was cooked better, or the jelly was, but overall the, the dish lacks creativity. Whereas Mr. Von Hohenheim, his jelly was way, way undercooked, but his dish was uh, so much more cohesive. Had the jelly been cooked, it probably would have been a delicious dish. By a very narrow margin, Tomoko. It was a very, very tough choice. Uh, Two points, yeah. putting the judges at danger, cost him uh, the first round. So you get to go on to the main course round. So Mr. Von Hohenheim, you can rejoin your crew in the crowd since sure, you were unjustly disqualified. I will be cheering for Tomoko the entire damn time. So now your next basket is out. The count of three, two, one. Open your basket. Three, two, one. Open your baskets. Open your basket. Roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. There's some what looks like peppermint candies. Like they're candy cane shaped, or they're that like hard ribbon candy? Ribbon candy. Okay, like ribbon candy. Mm-hmm. Okay, next. Mushroom looking fungus. What color? Green. Green mushroom. Okay, great. Appetizing. What's the next thing? Next thing is the head of some sort of fowl. Ugh. A bird head. Alien bird head. Is it alive? No, it's just a head, so it appears to be dead. I guess knowledge nature on the mushroom fungus and then on the bird. So alien bird head, my new band name, I call it. <laughs> Alright, 27 on the fungus Do you mushroom need a thing. Skateboarder? <laughs> Based on your experience last round and your experience with fungus and plants in general, and the bright colored nature of this fungus, you would assume it's dangerous. 
if eaten and if ingested. If you were to pick this off the ground, you'd say, I probably shouldn't eat this mushroom. That's bright green and likely dangerous. Not a species that's native to your planet, but it looks like something that's warning you not to eat it. Yeah, do it now with nature on the bird head. 25. Delicious bird head full of bird head meat. Like any other bird head you've ever seen in your life, just dead, decapitated from a bird and full of bird head meat. Nothing weird about it. Got big eyeballs. What was the first thing? Peppermint ribbon candy, bird head thing, and then fungus that's probably poisonous. I'm going to throw the ch- the bird head into <laughs> a pot of boiling water. In a separate thing, melt the peppermint candy with some actual mint leaves. Lean on the mint more. And then I want to micro um, mandolin the fungus thing into very skinny chips and throw those into the fryer. And then I want to get some bread and like yogurty sauce. I'm going to go in like a gyro direction. With the meat as it boils off of the head, all the brain juices go well. The gaminess with the uh, mint. I am guess I'm thinking like weird meat and mint with the yogurty-ish white sauce on bread something. And then chippies of that stuff that I'm going to like crumble on top so it's not a whole lot and it's not like a full potato chip on the side. I mean, if you don't have a profession of cooking that would just be a survival if you're trying to pull it up to the best of your ability. 21. Not bad for campfire cooking. Uh. See how your opponent does. He does better than you. Damn it. Wag bag. Wag bag. Yeah. I rolled 19 and he actually has cooking profession skill. He does something very similar to yours too. He does like a bird, bird face burger. What? Uh, he turns the beak into chips somehow. Bird beak yeah. chips. He brought an extra he ingredient. Mi- he microplanes the uh, mushroom on top of the burger, so it's even less than what you gave the judges. Slightly less poisonous. But he, he both- just did it straight? He didn't cook it at all? No, he's He's trying to kill them. He's going to kill you. <laughs> no, they I'm going to tell the judges he's trying to kill them. <laughs> you tell them he that. He didn't but- cook that. Don't eat it. It's poisonous because it's green. It's a very poisonous mushroom, but it can be safely eaten in small doses. And both of you gave them very little. Although you gave a little bit more. It made it a little bit more dangerous to eat. But I cooked mine. All the poison is in the fryer oil now, but I lose. Luckily. Yeah, he did cook better than you, so you lose by a hair. And he gets to eat ice cream. He gets to go to the last round and eat the free ice cream and get money. You keep the apron, so. A dirty apron. Yeah, it's yours now. <laughs> can I try to, like, put some food from the pantry in my bag? You can, you can roll a slide of hand and try to steal some food. Swag out. Bag, swag bag, swag <laughs> yeah, can I just start swag bag, swag bag. <laughs> start putting stuff in my bag. <laughs> you can slide a fan if you want to get away with it. Or don't if you want to get yelled at. I'm going to gra- go to the, the spices section. I'm looking for like small jars of spicy things that are all I probably wouldn't have come across before. Something to flavor up all those vegetables you guys eat on board? Yeah. You're getting bored of just plain vegetables on Zalshan? They're classics, but... Uh, now that you've had seasoning here in the test kitchen... Yeah, I'm just going to go swag strong. back, swag back, like grabbing one and then another one and then another one. Did you roll low enough that you actually are just walking around saying swag bag? <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, excuse me, miss. They're going to make you pull that stuff back. They have security <laughs> there, of course. No. Cameras are watching you. Where are our swag bags? You get a free apron. <laughs> yes. It's not in a bag, though. They're just new and exciting. Bags. Yeah, I understand. Sorry we don't have any swag bags for the cooking shows. Can I hug them and then say goodbye? Yeah. You hug a computer box and then say goodbye. Okay. Or does this mean that we're going to go to the next level? Oh, yeah, you mean down two levels? Down two levels? Yeah. Yeah. Down to the Coliseum. The gauntlet. Yeah, is this going to hurt? Why, do you want to sign up for the gauntlet? I want to know what it is before I do it. Yeah, they've got, like, champions set up, and there's, like, a gauntlet course you run through, and people throw things at you and hit you with stuff. <laughs> okay. And you fall off of things, and okay. then if you make it to the end, you get a prize. Okay. Sweet. I guess right. I'm going for it. Let's, why not? They're going to give you a very tight-fitting, especially since you're quite large, mankini. It's white, but right on your bulge in Comic Sans, it says, you already get sight in rainbow letters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Blix, do you want to play too? I would love to do this. I'll slap one on my shelf. Anybody else want to put on a mankini and join a gladiator battle? I mean, you're all welcome. Yeah, I don't have the, the strength to, to do well in this uh, adventure. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I think I'm going to get um, hurt for real if I do it. So, Tomoko and Mr. V, just watch. Yeah. Cheer on the crowd. Uh, Alright. Okay, yeah, you guys get in there. Go ahead and just jump in, they say. It's a it's pretty much free for all right now. Hop on in the gladiator arena. You guys get your mankinis on and just go at it. Well, uh, I just, just just love to run this course. Yeah, right now they're, they're doing a thing where you dodge where they shoot balls at you, so there's some stuff you can hide behind. Just get in there and let them shoot balls at you. <laughs> Won't be the last time. Right. So there's cameras up there, the crowd's gonna watch it and enjoy it. Right now you're trying to survive the onslaught of balls. I would like to use 
against other people as meat shields. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty large though, so even if you, even if you hold them up, it's like you're not covering your whole body. I have multiple people to use as uh, meat shields and like kind of like throw them into it, like actual like shields, like throw them into the ball. All right, so roll for initiative to try to grab someone there, Nikali. This is actually your first move. Thank you. I rolled way lower than that, so if you want to try to see him be a guy, I just hide behind Nikali and start weaving in and out between his legs. That's going to be high enough to grab this guy. My first victim, and he will be my shield, and I will grab another person, because why not? All right, I just fired at you guys. I missed you, Nikali, but I got a 16 on you, Kess. So, misses you, whiffs by. You want to try and grab another one, Nikali? Since they're focusing more on him, because he's a bigger target, I'm actually going to stop running around from behind him and get behind, like, a rock or, or a column or something. I'm a 19. I'm allowed. You got, you're waving two guys around in your hands. Okay, yeah. Trying to block uh, tennis balls coming at you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move behind. So because I know it's not two guys isn't going to cover all of me, and then I'm going to move behind a rock. So, like that's to cover the legs. And the two you guys just hold those over your head like an umbrella. Yeah, they fire off a lot of shots. Highest was a 19 on you there, Kess. Does that beat your AC? Oh, uh, it meets my AC. Oh, you can roll a reflex save to take half. Okay, for I that got level. 13. You'll take full damage. That's two. Two damage. It's not a whole lot. It's a tennis ball. Oh, I thought if I got hit, I was. No, no, I just take some damage. I mean, there's, the same there's spots. no really other purpose. Like, I, I kind of have my you know, awesome defense thing going on. Yeah, your, your people are getting pelted a lot. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll join back with Nikali and take my sword out. It's, uh, I'll be attacking any balls that are going to hit. I mean, you only get one attack per turn, so you could swing at one of the balls coming at you right now if you want. Roll an attack on ball. It's a little shot, but I'm going to allow it to hit anyway. I, sh- I should should be a 20, but I'm going to say that one was like a shitty shot, so you're going to hit it. Okay, I, I'm not going to try to hit him anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and try to hide and hide behind Nikali, who now has three two bodies in front of him. You cut up that ball, though. I'm sure whatever damage you roll will destroy a tennis ball. And all my shots are too low to hit any of you, and the two that hit your guys is probably bruised them and not you guys. You guys just want to chill there hiding? Yep. You crouch down. I'll just roll these volleys out until this time runs out then. This concludes our transmission. Tune in next time for more Dungeon to the Stars. Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater was sponsored by our fans and friends on Patreon. Donate today. Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater. Bye.